and let's see if that's live. It is. Everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing, this is Programmer Mitch, and we're going to be doing LinkedIn number 160. It's an intersection of two linked lists. It's an easy, but doesn't have a lot of um, accepted uh, submissions. So, so that's because, I know we'll get to it, I think the, the optimal way to do this, um, hey, Pulsating, thanks for stopping in today, is, the, is a little bit of a trick. And so, but let's, let's discuss it. Write a program to find the node at which the intersection of two singly linked lists begins. For example, the following two linked lists of A, A1, C1, C2, C3, and B, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, begin to intersect at, at node C1. So it's the B, it's, you know, the, it's B1, B2, B3, and then C1 is kind of like B4, B5, B6, and, you know, C1, C1 is also like A3, A4, A5. So they, they continue that way. If the two linked lists have no intersection at all, return null. In Python, we're going to say none. The linked list must retain the original structure after the function returns, so no, no destroying the linked list. You may assume that there are no cycles anywhere in the entire linked structure. Thank you. And your code should be preferably run in O of n time and use only O of one memory. So linear time complexity, but constant space complexity. And that's a bit of a wrinkle because one of the preferred solutions you can just think is you just walk through a linked list you add those to a hash table, uh, the values, and then when you walk through the next linked list, you just make that comparison. Um, so that'll be linear time complexity, but that'll be uh, linear space complexity as well, right? Because you're storing the values as you walk through one linked list. So that's the solution that, you know, pop, if you've been doing a little bit of algorithm problems, might, might pop in your head real, real quick. Um, let's get into the one that's constant, uh, constant memory. So here, down here, and this is actually from the um, example from the leak code uh, preferred solution, we have A, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and B, which we're going to start with 2, 4, 9, 11. So they intersect at, at 9. So I won't beat around the bush. The, the key, the trick to this question, to getting the optimal solution, and it's a little one that I, I don't think is good for um, interviews because I think it really is a trick, um, is you just put them one after the other and then you make a comparison. And so why does that work? And also why do I not like that for interviews because I, you know, it seems like much, kind of like a trick. So what we have A and then B up there, and down here we have AB and then BA. So what does A, B look like? It looks like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and then it becomes 2, 4, 9, 11, right? Then we have 2, 4, 9, 11 for B, A, and then that goes into 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. If you look here, wow, they match up right here. So why does that work? It works because one moment. Ah, it works because think about these these lengths. So A, B, and B, A are going to, A is, what is it, six nodes, and B is four. A, B is going to be 10. B, A is also going to be 10, right? Um, B is two less than A. So when we get to the B, A, it has to catch up, and it uses the two more from the A to, A to, A to start. This is not like a good uh, ex ex explanation. But basically, yeah, so then you have the B, which starts with four, and it, it, the A is six. It has to get two more to get caught up, and they're going to basically get caught up at the same spot. A is two longer, because when you add, but when you add the B to it, um, you know, it, the B is, is, is too shorter, so they'll, all, they'll get caught up at the same spot. Hopefully that makes sense, because uh, it works in practice. Now, what about the case? So how would you go about coding this? Well, you just keep, um, we have a head A up here and a head B over here. Um, you assign um, temp variables to, uh, for, for each of those, A is head A, B is head B. Um, because you need to have those references later. Um, then you just simply walk through each of those at the same time, 
um, this this A B uh, double linked list, uh, not doubly linked list, but uh, linked list of one after the other, and then the B A. And once you get to the end of A, you simply start at B. And once you get to the end of B, you start at A. And you're doing this in a while loop, and you're you're doing this in a while loop where A doesn't equal B. Um, and at the end of the day, once they equal each other, then you return that. And then, yep, we've accomplished our run in linear time complexity and only uh, constant uh, space complexity. What about the case where they don't intersect, right? We wanted to return none for that. Does this algorithm work for that too? Yeah, sure it does. Let's take a look. Let's change this B to 24810, so we have no intersection here. Uh, then AB becomes uh, 24810 over here. And 24810 over here. Um, yeah, now we just see that they never match up. And we're doing a while loop while A doesn't equal B. Well, what's hidden, like, you know, in every, um, how does a linked list terminate? Because it ends in a none, right? If there's, if there's, you're at the last value. Um, and none is, does equal none, right? And then you're going to terminate. You can either return A or B, doesn't matter, because they both can be none at that point. Um, and yeah, it'll work for if there's no intersection as well. I, I do want to point out, um, you know, I've interviewed some people. Um, I've talked to people. I've been interviewed. I've talked to friends that interview. What I'm doing here, I've described the entire algorithm, but I haven't, I've only written comments, right? I haven't written a single line of code. That is generally the approach you want to do. Um, I think a lot of people, when they get into these, in an interview setting, they, they just start coding like right, right away. Um, that is not generally the approach you want to do. You want to really think about the, the process and, um, and, and go about it that way. In fact, sometimes I've had interviews where they say, okay, that seems to have an understanding. You don't even have to write a single thing of code. That's always nice, too. But let's code this out. So just like we said, ooh, let's, um, if head A is none, or let's say not, not head A. Or not head B. I think that'll work. Yeah, return none. So if, if there's no linked list for either of them, there's not going to be an intersection. We should take care of that right right away, right? Um, then we're going to have those quick references, or we're going to keep um, we're going to assign head A to A and uh, head B to B. And so we can use those in our while loop later to um, add on to it. So we can make that A, B long linked list and the B, A long linked list, linked list. While A does not equal to B. So it's A is A uh, is A dot next. That's how we walk through a linked list, right? But it's actually, we want to think about, well, what happens if not A, if we reach the end of that linked list, right? Because this is also like, an, you know, there's an implicit none here, right? Well, at that point, then we we start the B, like we talked about. And so that's an if-else statement there. We do the same thing. If not B, then B equals head A. Same same concept. Once we reach the end of B, we, we start with A. Um, else, uh, B equals B dot next. And then you just return A, right? So we... We walk through each linked list at the same time. We stack them, and they will, if they have an intersection, if like this, two, they'll reach that at the same time. And if they don't, we'll return none. Let's see if that works. It's, uh, Hooray! We're accepted. So we had to return A, right? Well, what happens if we return B? Yeah, it, B also works. So we can return A, we can return B, whatever works. They're, they're either going to both be none or both be the same thing. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, this is that's kind of the angle of doing intersection of two linked lists in optimal uh, linear complexity and um, uh, constant time memory. Can't beat that, right? You're going to have to walk through both of them. Um, so once again, the trick is you have to put them on, on top of each other and then see where they line up. This is uh, always fun. I'm programmer Mitch. I do a quick practice um, 
alg algorithmic question every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. EST. Today we covered uh, leak code number 160, intersection of two linked lists, and I hope to see you next Sunday. Catch you later.